We always get used to seeing SpaceX pioneering rocketry with its futuristic technologies, thanks to its visions and ambitions for humanity. For this, the company has overcome many challenges and achieved many successes led by the tech mogul Elon Musk. One of these things that have a lot of questions around it is the rocket brain, which can take the rocket from the launching point here on Earth to its destination and precisely dock with the space station, or farther away in Starship's case. This technology is very inspiring and worth pointing out, as the company has developed a custom brand new rocket brain in a simple and impossible way to carry this technology to a very new level. In today's video, we will talk about the SpaceX software and hardware challenges and what is Elon's plan for Starship to improve communication on Mars. SpaceX designed its rocket computer's hardware and software with custom standards to deal with the many challenges throughout the mission. Once the rocket is in space, it starts to face a lot of harmful radiation, which has a risky effect on electronics inside the spacecraft. This effect is called bit flip. This happens when a high energy particle hits a transistor inside the memory or the processor to flip its status from zero to one or vice versa. This is very dangerous because the computer saved this bit before as it is and won't know that this bit has flipped its value when it's time to call it, which will affect all the upcoming calculations. SpaceX assumed that nobody can completely protect electronic instruments from radiation in space, even if you are using expensive radiation-hardened components. Instead, they use the off-shelf parts that anyone can buy on Amazon with a genius solution. SpaceX vehicles can easily detect and correct these bit flips by using three redundant flight computers to do the same task simultaneously. Each one runs on a dual-core x86 processor. Moreover, each computer does not utilize the multi-core capabilities of a processor. Instead, they perform each computation on the two cores separately and compare the results. This means these three flight computers with dual-core processors act as six independent computers that are regularly verifying each other's calculations. So if one of the flight computer's outputs has a different value for any reason, BitFlip is one of them. The system recognizes this error and reboots the hit computer to prevent further errors. Then it synchronizes it again with other computers to work smoothly as an independent one. But what if radiation hits all the computers, you might ask? Well, this is very unlikely to happen, but even this is in the plan. SpaceX vehicles are designed to handle extreme situations, including this one. The spacecraft can switch to use other computers on the vehicle to overcome this situation. Normally, Dragon spacecraft is equipped with 18 other systems on board using the same method of triple redundancy computers. With that, the total number of processors is up to 54. Hey, this is just for one spacecraft. Incredible, isn't it? Yes, but this can provide more safety and minimize the risk than any other spacecraft. And to avoid harsh conditions throughout the mission, which include a lot of vibrations while launching and intense heat when entering the atmosphere, SpaceX vehicles cope with an enormous amount of heat and cold to range from 250 degrees Fahrenheit when facing the sun and minus 240 degrees Fahrenheit when sunlight is blocked. With these challenges, we might get an idea of some of the hardware components used in SpaceX's vehicles, but what about the software that controls everything? SpaceX uses Linux operating system that runs on almost all desktops to power its vehicle. This enables engineers to streamline the development process while using thousands of secure applications that come with this operating system. Additionally, the programming structure is built on C++ because it's one of the most popular programming languages, and to benefit from the large C++ ecosystem, this allows SpaceX to hire a lot of brilliant programmers to test and work with already written code instead of reinventing the wheel. For monitoring, SpaceX uses LabVIEW. For those who don't know, it's a graphical tool that can run on Windows, but instead, they're using it on Linux. Besides the popularity benefits of this tool like we mentioned in the C++, this helps SpaceX engineers better visualize the telemetry that they get from the spacecraft during the flight. Moreover, LabVIEW has a lot of features like build a logic using block diagrams, build analysis algorithm, 
and integrate sensors measurements from different vendors. Adding to that, SpaceX built a database that can be shared between all vehicles, which will help in reducing repeated bugs. Additionally, they have test stands bolted on all Falcon 9 components so that they can simulate a whole flight to figure out potential problems. The rocket code is made up of a couple of 100,000 lines, and the engineers can perform cutting the strings, a feature that allows them to shut down the computer in a mid-simulation randomly to observe how it responds. In Starship's case, the company hasn't revealed a lot of information about the hardware or software used in the rocket computer. But it won't be so far from what they are currently using in Falcon rockets, since it has tested in various successful missions. But for Mars communication, Elon Musk confirms that SpaceX will provide services to Mars for Starship. In a recent tweet, he revealed that this satellite broadband company, Starlink, will extend its services to Mars. This idea came to light when a user asked if Starlink will be deployed between Earth and Mars to strengthen communication for a Starship. In response to the user's tweet, Musk amplified the excitement with one word, yeah. Moreover, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell's interview with Time reportedly emphasized that strong communication will be extremely crucial on the Red Planet. However, she stated that just the constellation won't do the job. Ultimately, SpaceX chooses to use off-the-shelf hardware to be more generic, and to use software and tooling that a lot of developers already know, which will increase the chance of having great engineers. Besides the cost reduction benefit of using these components, a software lead in SpaceX said that there are over 40 flight computers sitting on engineers' desks for testing and development. Literally anyone can plug it in and start testing and adding new features. And with the popular tools they have, they literally can hire a game developer to work smoothly with their system. Let us know in the comment, what do you think about SpaceX software and hardware? Thanks for watching.